What is up, everybody? I just finished my first month in Unreal Engine, and I had a fantastic time. I learned so much, and I thought, you know what? Being the first week of January 2021, why don't I just take a pause and reflect back on the last 30 days and see if I can condense some of the knowledge as a noob and share that with anybody else that might be starting their journey in Unreal Engine today. I've been spending a lot of time in the Unreal Engine community, specifically on the Facebook pages and in the forums, and I see a lot of the same questions from someone starting out for their first time, specifically around what are the hardware and computer requirements that I need to complement working in Unreal Engine, as well as where do I go for my first tutorial? How do I learn blueprints? How do I learn world building? How do I learn to build my first game? How do I learn sequencer so I can make movies and, and, and do filmmaking like they're doing in the Mandalorian. You get all these types of different questions depending on where, you know, the person that's entering Unreal Engine wants to go. And for me the answer is 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 quite simple because I have an interest in doing all of those different facets and so I've spent a lot of time looking at hundreds and hundreds of different tutorials over the last month. I've watched hundreds and hundreds of tutorials and as a beginner, I think I've found a really good path to get you from day one to day 30 um, with free uh, YouTube tutorials. So I'll, I'll go through listing those out for you. I'll go through a little bit of my experience with um, CPU and, and performance. I did have the opportunity to use two different computers over the last 30 days um, with varying specs between them. And so I've got some real life examples of, of how those work in, in, in 3D and how those work with the, the ancillary systems that you'll need to support your work in Unreal Engine. And so I'll share those with you. And then lastly, I've got a few tips and tricks um, that as a noob, I appreciated and learned over the last 30 days that hopefully will save you time and make your journey a little bit smoother. Um, mine was pretty smooth, but you know, you're, you're going to run into bumps and, and bruises along the way. And hopefully I can, uh, I can reduce the amount of damage that you take along the way and just make your journey that much more enjoyable. So let's get into some of that content and we'll kick it off. The first thing that I see uh, a lot of people questioning is what are the specs that I need for a machine to run uh, Unreal Engine? So I fired up Unreal's uh, documentation right from their website, and here's their recommended hardware. This I really would encourage you to treat as a minimum spec in any real world application. Um, if you're planning to do any sort of work with 3D assets, uh, any sort of world building, this just simply isn't gonna cut it. I'd be surprised if this was enough to create any sort of 2D games, um, but you should really treat these specs as the bare minimum. If you plan on doing anything more than just running the console itself, um, then I think you're going to need uh, far better specs. In terms of real life workflow, I don't think that it's realistic. In terms of what the software allows you to do and the things that you're likely going to want to do in the engine, it just doesn't become realistic. And I'll just give an example. If if you're creating um, a, a project and, you know, specifically, you know, either, you know, a, a sequence uh, to make a, you know, a, a short film or, you know, you're in here to program and, and create an actual game, you're going to get to a point where you're going to run into issues and then you're going to have to compile or add lighting or, you know, some other things that are a little bit more resource intensive. And if it takes you half an hour, an hour, two hours, three hours to bake the lighting or compile a project, um, that's going to really slow down your realistic workflow. If your goal is to make a finished product, it's going to make it very difficult to get there if you're having to wait two and three hours in that iterative process. Um, specifically, if you find find a if if you're baking the lighting, it takes two or three hours. When it finishes, you go in and you find it's not right. Well, now you've got to go in and you've got to correct your problem, and then you've got to go through that process again. And it just makes those iterations that much slower. And from a feasibility perspective, running on this hardware to me just isn't realistic. I've got I'm fortunate that I was able to um, test out two machines in this environment. I'll show you um, kind of high level specs of the machines that I had run uh, with this. The machine on your right is the first machine that I have, and it's a little lower end. Um, it's still quite a, a good machine, but it it doesn't it itself is far better than um, the minimum specs that are put on on real site. And I would say that I wouldn't work in it 
today concerning what I want to do in, in the 3D space and the lighting and, and, and things like that. So you can see there's an i7 in there. It is a quad core uh, with, with the processing speed there, 32 gigs of RAM. Um, and uh, the graphics card that's in there is a 750 Ti. Um, it will start the the, the program and the first time that you run the program uh, it does typically take a very long time uh, to compile and, and generate all of the the, the lighting and, and things that it needs to do to kick off for the first time um, and the lower your machine is on on the spectrum the longer that's going to take this machine on the right the first time that I kicked off Unreal um, I installed it ran through the process tried to open it for the first time and it literally took more than 24 hours to run so if you think about that this machine being uh you know far above the minimum requirements and it taking over a day to, to open um you'll also find similar experiences when you go to if you're looking at doing any sort of level building and putting lighting in there a machine like this can't handle real-time lighting, so you have to bake the lighting, and you're going to run into hours and hours and hours of, of delay. It certainly can run the engine. You can certainly learn in it. You can play with some of the assets, but it is going to run into problems, and you are going to run a little bit slower. I'm not saying that it's not feasible to use. I, I certainly created some levels and, and played around and did some learning on this machine on the right. Um, but it, you know, in a realistic workflow perspective, you're going to have to be that much more patient. On the left is the machine that I'm on now, um, and this one has 128 gigs of RAM. I don't think that's necessary. Uh, I put that in specifically. I like to play around a little bit in After Effects, and After Effects can be a pig with memory, um, and so that's the reason that I put that in. I, I have worked with 8 gigs of RAM, 16 gigs of RAM, and then a 32. I don't think that the, the jump from 32 to 128 is noticeably different in your regular day-to-day -day machine or in Unreal specifically. Um, but I did see a significant jump moving from 8 to 16 and then 16 to 32. And forget Unreal, that's just your your regular, you know, things that we do on your machine in Windows and on Chrome and in your browsers and things like that. Uh, RAM is, is relatively cheap nowadays. So if you are going to, to spend some money on a computer, I would recommend um, putting in the extra couple hundred bucks to go to 32 gigs. It's not a lot of money and the payback that you get. I think is uh, worth it. So you certainly can go with eight gigs, but my recommendation is 32. Um, and if you want to go overkill like me, you can do 128, but you're not going to see a big return on that. That's That's been my experience. Um, the other thing is, uh, the other two big things are processor and your graphics card. Um, my initial graphics card couldn't handle any sort of ray tracing. And so if you're ta talking about ray tracing, you're talking about real time light manipulation, if you're building a level and you want to put a light in a certain area and see the shadows in real time, you're not going to be able to do that with this, uh, with the GTX 750 or anything in that range. The bare minimum card that I would recommend is actually the one that I have on my rig today. Um, and quite honestly, I, I wish that I went with a, a higher end card. Um, I wrote 1650 here, but it's actually 1660. So in terms of a graphics card, well, I won't be able to edit it in real time, but in terms of a graphics card, if you are having to you know, pinch pennies, I wouldn't go with anything less than the 1660 Ti, uh, six gigs. I'm running that today. It's certainly sufficient to, to run Unreal, but as soon as you get into any sort of uh, ray tracing, any sort of uh, real-time lighting, and that sort of stuff that, that relies on the GPU, um, you're gonna see significant performance drops. And even with this card today, baking lighting and, and running scenarios like that, it does take you know, 20, 30 minutes, up to an hour, sometimes depending on the size uh, of your project and maybe even a couple hours, right? So um, yeah, a, a graphics card is going to be really, really important in terms of what you're doing in Unreal. If your plan is only to you know, do things in 2D, I think you can certainly, um, get the 1660 or you know model slightly lower and, and not worry about it but even then you still may run into um, compilation uh, times that are longer than than you're willing to work with so um, I hope that's helpful in, in terms of that um, in terms of processor I've got a, a couple of um, got a couple of charts that I brought up um, and you know if if you're looking to compare um, 
if you're looking to compare computer specs, I, I really highly recommend uh, looking at CG Director. They do a really good job. They communicate it in an easy way for everybody to understand. And they've got some really good benchmarking graphs. I pulled up two that are sort of related to what I wanted to point out, but they have tons and tons of graphs that you can go into and look at and, and get the more detailed specs. So if we just look at the first um, graph that I or chart that I've pulled up here, it's got a whole bunch of the different processors and you'll notice that it's only really AMD and, and Intel. And there's often a question of like, should I go Intel and should I go AMD? I think unless you're really at the top end and you want the cutting edge um, technology, honestly, you're splitting hairs. The really important piece in your processor for rendering specifically, if you're planning to use your computer to render is to look at the amount of cores and you'll look at, if we look at, what is this, like the top 20 that they've sort of recommended in terms of processors, you can see the really top end is, is uh, consumed by AMD at the moment. And then um, Intel's best processor is, is in here at like seventh or eighth, right? So I think AMD is an, is, is an easy decision. Although if you go to Intel, it's not really gonna matter, provided that you know, you're getting a, a decent amount of cores so that if you are planning to do any sort of rendering, you're covered there. Um, I wouldn't worry personally too much about the top end speed. They're pretty comparable nowadays. Um, the speed really matters, I think, if you're into gaming more than development. Um, and really in terms of this environment, and I'm not just talking about Unreal, I'm starting to sort of bridge over and we haven't got there yet about the need in Blender and some of these other tools where I'd recommend that uh, cores is probably your, your greater ally. And if you look at this graph too, it's it's pretty, like I said, it's you're splitting hair. So the way that this graph works is it's got the cores, it's got your um, top end speed for each core, and then it's got sort of a score that they've um, made in minutes. So, and I kind of I kind of equate that to overall time savings. So if you're going to get the top end um, processor that's out there today, and I'm not sure that this is, there may be a, a few other ones that are out there that are a little bit faster, but you can see that in terms of uh, the Intel's top processor, it's about twi twice as fast when it comes down to overall rendering um, and really rendering is going to be spent when you're doing anything lighting wise or um, uh, 3D rendering wise. Um, but, you know, if you look at from top to bottom, landing somewhere in the middle of the pack in terms of what you're paying and what you're getting. I don't think that it's it's horrible to land anywhere in this in this mid range, and really it comes down to what do you want to spend. Um, if you really want to go Intel, go Intel. If you really want to go AMD, go AMD. And you know, just knowing that 3D is is where everything's going, light map and ray tracing is where everything's going. A lot of that's going to land on your GPU, but if you do want to leverage your CPU for any of that, it's really safe to be um, sort of in the AMD space right now. Personally, I went, ended up with uh, this guy here. And reason being is I didn't really care about the top end performance. I felt like, um, you know, in the future, everything's going to land on the GPU anyways. And I just sort of felt that this guy had an onboard, onboard cooling system. Um, and I didn't want to go and buy a card and then buy a whole bunch of extra cooling supplies to cool that card and then sort of increase the price tag. So I thought this was a fair sort of middle ground. Um, for where I wanted to land and I'm, I'm not I'm actually really happy with uh, the processor that I got it's been smooth sailing and so I'd be happy to recommend this one um, but like I said at, at this point if you're at the high end uh, of the processors and if you're trying to decide between AMD and Intel stop splitting hairs just go with your gut and um, you know maybe read a, th a few threads and, and just pick one at the end of the day that that makes sense for your budget at the end of the day you're you're talking about minutes um, you know, if you're anything down in, in this range, you're going to be sacrificing time. You can see the Intel i7 and i5. All that means is that your cycles are just going to be that much longer. It's going to take that much longer to do every, everything. You're going to see performance hits when you're moving around in the 3D space and dealing with lighting and things like that. So um, if you can get somewhere up in the mid range and then really just feel it out in terms of pricing um, and things like that. But, uh, you know, cores are your best friend and, and that's where I'd sort of focus at if, if it was me. Um, and then the other thing uh, your CG director has is it's got uh, video cards, same sort of philosophy. Again, this one is, is a little bit different in how they've, they've compiled this chart. They've got a, a render score, gaming score. So this is really your development. 
uh, how long does it take and what are the what's the performance grade um, for rendering how does it perform uh, what's the benchmark in terms of you know playing games and then they've combined the two and they've put over the overall performance score I think it's fair just to look at the performance score there's you know in if you are looking at this from a development um, perspective you probably are going to want to do a little bit of both if you're developing a game you're going to want to play and, and run your game and so I think this is a fair chart to look at and then they've also done a dollar comparison so at the end they've sort of got the price tag of each card you can see the card that I have here is 300 bucks um, and its performance score is, is 200 I can tell you like I said um, it's not it's it isn't exactly where I need it to be. It can do everything. It can do uh, it can do ray tracing, but as soon as I get into ray tracing, as soon as I get into um, any sort of reflection spheres, I do see the screen start to blurring. Start blurring. If you get into some of the the newer high end, you know, water, um, the Meerkat demo, um, where they're they're looking at individual hairs and, and calculating how those hairs moves and things like that, it doesn't do. Again, it will run it, uh, but it's the bare minimum. So again, my advice is, you know, if you really are exploring Unreal, if you want to be ready for Unreal 5, um, this is the lowest that I'd go on, on on this scale, and I would actually shoot somewhere in this range. The only caveat I'll say to that is you need to give some thought into what is it that you're trying to get on, out of Unreal. If you're developing a game, you also have to think about if you have the top of the line card, and you're able to process everything and you're able to run everything smoothly um, and you create your game and see no problems, what's your target audience? If you think that the average consumer has the card that I have, if you're making a game, you're excluding me from that development. So there, you may need to have some thought about what is the average consumer going to have and you may want to sacrifice a little bit of your quality so that you can develop to that level of quality. I think what I'm going to end up doing is is actually move uh, the card that I have in this machine to my old rig and then I'll probably look at you know if you look at the the price point in terms of performance for an extra hundred bucks you know I can get a card that uh, doubles in performance is halfway there to the top end but in terms of cost like that's really reasonable in terms of this tree I mean um, that's where they've done performance over dollar and, and this looks like a nice place to sort of land so I might go and get this card so that I can play do everything that I want to do in the system but then be able to offload my project to my second rig and really do a performance test and be able to meet in the middle in terms of what is it that my audience uh, can consume that's great that I can kick out the top end stuff but if people can't consume it then um, what's the point so some thought goes into it there and I think these charts are really helpful I hope that helps you and then you know there's all the uh, uh, you know ancillary or extra pieces of, of items that go into a computer above and beyond just you know the CPU GPU um, and and the RAM and you know in terms of storage I think you know bare minimum you've got to have two terabytes personally I've got four terabytes of SSD um, storage on my machine and then I've got an 8 gig um, uh, NAS drive as well I'm using a big chunk of that like half of that storage within a month already just getting different assets and playing and, and just having the handcuffs off and being able to do whatever I want so I would recommend that at a bare minimum you've got two terabytes of storage um, I would recommend more than that uh, specifically the type of storage that I got here is, is sort of what's leading in the market today. Storage isn't really expensive. If you compare these prices to what you're getting, you know, a couple years ago, it, it really is quite affordable. You don't need to have the top end storage. So I'm not going to say you, you do get a bit of a, a, a performance increase with that. Um, and if you are going top end in terms of processor and, and video card, you may want, um, you know, the RAM and the storage speeds to sort of match that. Um, but if not, I would go more for size at a bare minimum you have to have SSD on your on your main computer um, in your network storage it's not as a, as important but bare minimum two terabytes of SSD storage I would recommend four terabytes and um, you know getting some of the higher end high speed um, storage to go with that um, so that gives you some insight there when I'm talking about network, network storage um, 
specifically, I would recommend looking at a RAID device. This Buffalo um, link station is amazing out of the box. Um, really what it is, is myself personally, I got the eight terabit uh, station. It comes with uh, duplicating drives. So really what you have is you have eight terabytes of storage twice, but the way that RAID works is that it's four terabytes isolated separately. And what it does is when you copy onto that four terabytes, it replicates onto, um, onto the second drive. And so especially if you're going to scrim on your um, storage that's on your main rig, your main computer, then I would really recommend getting a link station to go along with it. Reason being is if you have a project, you copy it all over there into RAID, it's now duplicated and it's saved. So you can condense the amount of information that you store on your main machine because you've got this sort of back, backup network. And when you're copying stuff over, it's actually backing it up for you. So you have no worry about losing your project. If you're really serious about, um, you know, 3D rendering and, and, and building um, 3D modeling and, or game development or, you know, making movies, you don't want to lose all that work. The worst feeling in the world is putting in all of this effort, having something crash, and then you lose everything. So where a, um, a NAS storage and a RAID specifically configured device, it saves you. It doesn't have to be SSD. It can be slow because you can just copy over that project um, after you're done for the day, daily, weekly, or whatnot, and then you can go worry-free. Um, if one drive fails, the other one's got it backed up automatically. And like I said, you don't have to worry about the configuration, any of that. Um, you can see the price points down here. So that gives you an idea of what you'd be into. But if you're really serious about this space, I would look into um, LinkStation. It's been fantastic for me, um, and I would recommend it. And the next part is um, really getting into what are the tools that I'm going to need, and where's the information that I'm going to want to get. There's so many tutorials out there. There's so many courses that I can pay for, and there's I can learn about you know a sequencer and I can learn about blueprinting and I can learn about materials and I can learn about level development and so I've put this sort of uh, roadmap of tutorials that I think is a really good place to start for a beginner so I think the first place that anybody should start is with this tutorial set up by Unreal Sensei um, it starts with uh, at the end of it you'll be able to build exactly what you see here which i think is fantastic if you look at that and compare that to what the average person could do um, a couple of years ago versus just having this at your fingertips for free um, it's pretty insane um, i'd be happy building that i was happy building that i replicated that and it was really cool to go through it um, you will notice the tutorial is over four hours long um, but this kid is has an amazing knack, and they've they've spent a, you can tell they've spent a lot of time and effort planning this out in logical phases. He's got it broken out into different pieces. He talks about all of the basics of just understanding the uh, the editor window itself. He goes into materials, um, goes into mega scans, and shows you how to set up mega scans. Um, and ultimately, at the end of it, you you have a really, really, really good base understanding of what is available in Unreal Engine, what are some of the other in systems that you interact with, how do you get them set up, and I just think it's a fantastic place for anyone who's looking at Unreal for the first time to start. So I would go here. I wouldn't steer anybody else anywhere else. Um, I would also say that it works really well is that some people come in and they say, hey, I want to learn about blueprinting. Well, I think blueprinting is sort of the next sort of level, right? And and um, while he doesn't touch any blueprinting in this tutorial, what he does do is he goes um, into detail on how to build the materials, which technically um, use a similar type of style to bl blueprinting. I call it uh, blueprinting for materials. It's a very similar um, uh, UX user experience. Um, it's a really good stepping stone. If you want to learn blueprinting and you know nothing, this is a great place to start. So learn the materials. You'll learn some basic concepts of bl blueprinting, a little bit of logic, how the system works. And then after you've completed this, you'll be in a really good place to start moving on to the basics of blueprinting. And I would certainly uh, really highly recommend approaching it in this manner. I think it's a much better sequence as opposed to just diving into blueprints right away. You certainly can, um, but especially if you have no programming background, um, then I would start here. So I think I, I uh, beat that to death. Um, this is the place to start this tutorial. Can't, um, 
can't recommend that enough. And then the next place you want to go, and this may seem a little bit strange and you may say, yeah, that wasn't, that's not what I want to do in Unreal. But the next thing I would do is I would highly, highly, highly recommend getting to know Blender. And it doesn't matter if you don't want to be a, a 3D artist and you're not big into, you know, 3D modeling and you're not going to do the 3D animation. I get it why you might be resistant to Blender. That was my um, initial reaction at, at the outset as well. Um, but now that I know a little bit of Blender, it absolutely is the second place that you go. So after you've learned Unreal, you get the basic concepts of Unreal. I, I just, I can't see a way that if you're going to do any sort of animation, any sort of game development, any sort of level building, that you shouldn't at least have some base knowledge of Blender. And the best place to start is um, with the Blender Guru. I mean, just look at how many views this video has had, how many subscribers this guy has. There is a really, 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 really good methodology here. And um, anytime that you start in, uh, it's, it's a bit of a joke in the Blender community, is everybody starts with a 3D donut, and that's what he teaches you how to make. So I have no artist background. I have no 3D modeling background. I had no understanding of Blender, and I went through this tutorial. Um, it is another investment of several hours. So, you know, if it's four hours for Unreal Sensei's introduction to um, Unreal Engine, it's it's a probably similar investment on the Blender side. By the end of it, you'll be able to produce this, which is insane if you think about it. And, and you know, some people may be saying like, uh, I, I won't be able to do that. You absolutely will. I can tell you. He's going to do it. He's, he's so good. He's funny. Um, he's entertaining the whole way through do this course you absolutely won't regret it at least even if you are shying away from the 3d modeling at least you'll understand things and it'll help you in your troubleshooting of assets or if you want to make a change or you want somebody to make a change or you want some help with an asset that you want to change um this is where you're going to go and the base information that you get from this you are going to absolutely need in unreal so i think this is step two uh Step three, um, and you know what, I've, brought, I've touched on it, is you know there's really three basic concepts that I see for Unreal, and that's game development, um, 3D sort of modeling and manipulation, and then there's the, the animation and, and filmmaking um, sort of section of it. Um, this video is a, is a really good one that I enjoyed. It kind of shows you, if you are looking at it from the eyes of a filmmaker, um, what does Unreal have to offer? It's this guy, I, I, um, Alvaro, um, what it is, is this his first time going in there and, and playing around with it or, you know, one of his first times and he's kind of explaining his experience and then he, you know, he makes some um, really cool animations just in, in the hour here. It is a little bit of a, a less user friendly uh, tutorial than these first two, but I would recommend it nonetheless just to get that exposure to that filmmaking sort of viewpoint on what Unreal can do um, and it'll just help you even if you are doing game development you are going to want to do video cutscenes and things like that I expect and so um, it's it's a really good tutorial just to give you an idea of what's there and you know maybe point you in the right direction that when you go down that path so I would recommend um, going through this one as well and then fourth I'm going to direct you back to Unreal Sensei um, he's got a really cool video here where it takes you from um, from the ground all the way up to uh, the uh, overview of, of the planet. And he's got you going from, uh, he's got a camera shooting all the way in from this scene that you're seeing with the planet and landing up on the ground. Um, it's a really cool video, another good tutorial, his same style. So if you liked him the first go around, um, it, it's, it's the same type of quality there. So you got this character waving that he's going to teach you to create, uh, and then you fly out. And Hello, everyone. In this tutorial, we will create so a It's kind of cool. It, it, um, it, it, it builds off of what he's taught you before. It builds off the sequencing that you've seen in the previous tutorial. Um, doesn't really relate too much to the Blender tutorial that I showed you, but it, you might have a deeper, deeper understanding of FBXs and, and things like that and 3D models by that point. So it, it is sort of a nice tie-in overall, and I would highly recommend this being sort of your fourth um, fourth spot to, to go. Um, it touches a little bit of on terrain building, touches a little bit on level building, and then also it gives you that um, atmosphere, exposure to atmosphere, and then, you know, the planetary level if you're looking at space or things like that. So I think it's a nice progression through these tutorials to do that one fourth. Um, and then what do we got after that? After that, um, this is probably what's going to excite the game developers. And um, I would recommend following one of these tutorials. So 
you've got a really popular tutorial here um, that was like not even what is that dev slopes uh, produced by dev slopes obviously lots of people have used it in the past it really just introduces your first sort of um, 3d game i think it's done quite well it gives you a, a really hokey little um, shooter but it, it is kind of cool as your first game development um, if you wanted to go the 2d approach um, i would recommend going through the flappy bird tutorial with ponty pants uh, ponty pants um, his production value compared to everybody else that i've seen in unreal in terms of the youtube space is above uh it sets the bar way above everybody else he comes from a uh video background um, i believe he was working on movies and things like that um, in his previous career and so you really see the production value in his youtube video so it's a little bit enjoyable that way um he's, he's got a, a a really big personality he's pretty funny um and so he's he's just you know entertaining in in general outside of um having some unreal content but i really enjoyed this tutorial on flappy birds um flappy birds is a you know if you're not familiar with it is a really popular uh 2d game that went on to the mobile platform and, and went viral um as i think one of the first sort of viral um games to hit like the apple and and um uh, play store markets anyways so it takes you how to through how to create that in unreal engine so i think it was really valuable and within these videos that's when you really get your first taste of actual blueprinting. And so I think it's a good entry level uh, way to get into that phase of Unreal um, and actually have a solid product at the end through both these tutorials. You'll have a bit of a, a working game uh, 3D wise if you choose to do this one first. And then in the 2D space, you'll get one um, from Ponty. Um, and then, you know, learning about these YouTubers as you go, you'll be able to refer to um, some of their other creations. So. Once you've completed those, then I would say it's time to move on to um, Ryan. Now, what's his last name here? Ryan L. Ryan Laley Games. And Ryan is really a guru when it comes to game development. I believe he teaches um, programming and game development as his career. And then he's got this successful YouTube channel that he's running that dives into so many different um, aspects of how do you you know create a dialogue how do you create a mini map how do you use wall switches like all these little cool little things um i mean personally i would recommend you know uh, a, another exhaustive sort of tutorial so i wouldn't do these sort of one shots out of the gate i would actually try and replicate something like the inventory system you can go through i mean uh, he's got hundreds of videos here you can go through and maybe pick one that's more uh in line with something that you want to do but even if it's not something that you want to do, I've done this inventory tutorial with him. I thought it was really well done. Um, he makes a couple of errors through the video and then he goes back and corrects them. So you're not left with, with something incomplete. Um, he's really articulate and um, it just, he shows you in real time. He doesn't uh, go and, and hide and, and show everything perfect. He'll make mistakes along the way and then go back and correct them. So it's really interesting um, and, and nice to see somebody in, in real time just um, doing what a, a person actually coding would be doing in real time and not, you know, sugar coding it or, or hiding what that is. Um, so I think this is a, a good place to start. And then, you know, once you're in here, I've shown you sort of a gamut of, of different people and their tutorials. Then I think you open up the doors and, you know, you can, you can look at, you know, going through all of Ryan's tutorials. If you like them, you can go back to some of the other guys that I showed you. Um, but I really think that that is a, is a nice progression path through your first month. That's got me to, to where I am today. Um, and so I thought I'd share that with you. And that sort of takes away the noise of all of the other avenues and all the other tutorials that you can follow out there. And it gives you a nice progression path. And then I think after your first month, you'll have, you know, can I hack it in this environment? Is this for me? But also you'll know, I guess almost the full range of, of what Unreal has to offer, and then you'll be able to decide, well, where do I want to go from here? Okay, cool. So that's uh, your um, your rig setup, and then your tutorial step-by-step -step guide to your first month. Um, and then there's a few other things that I want to show you. So um, I don't think that you can, you know, you could come into Unreal and say, oh, I'm just using Unreal. I, I, I spoke about it when I spoke about Blender a little bit earlier. I don't think that's realistic. I think for sure, no matter what you're doing, you are going to have to do some level of um, work outside of the Unreal Engine in a 3D modeling tool and in a 2D um, in a uh, 2D asset management tool like Photoshop. So my theme is always why not do it for free? 
it's it's amazing the level and quality of tools that are available that are um, uh, production ready and used in a professional environment that, that we have access today for for nothing and the support and the communities that go along with it um, the amount of videos of how to use them out there is, is amazing so I thought I'd just show you at a bare minimum you obviously need to get blender um, do that donut video that I showed you that tutorial series and at least have bl blender at, at your fingertips I'd also recommend um, a free comparable to Photoshop and that's what GIMP and, and Krita will give you I don't want to get into it because <laughs> I recommended GIMP on, on a Facebook channel and then of course all the, the Krita soldiers or Krita soldiers, I don't know how you say it, came in and they're like, no, GIMP sucks and blah, 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 and you know, you'll have the same on the other side. Um, they're essentially the same tool. GIMP's been around for 25 years, very similar to Photoshop. Krita's a new up and comer. My understanding is Krita is uh, more focused on illustration and, and has some advantages there and, and really works well with people that are into illustration. And GIMP is a little bit more um, focused on the functionality matching with uh, like a Photoshop, uh, Adobe Photoshop, for example. It does have, you know, the, the community and the tutorials and the 25 years of solidifying its, its presence behind it, where Krita is a little bit new. So that'll be... Um, a bit of a, a gap between the two, but they are, from everything I've read, they're very comparable. I haven't used Krita yet myself. I only just started using GIMP. I, I actually know Adobe Photoshop decently well, but I thought, you know, once I was getting into this environment, there's a cost for everything. I can't believe that everything can be free like it is. And so I've switched over to the free tools and I'm just starting to learn. And, um, you know, it's, it is very similar to Adobe. It's pretty intuitive if you're familiar with any of those type of uh, pieces of software. Um, and so, and if you don't know anything uh, or you can't find or it doesn't line up with, with some of the software that you do know, there's, that do know, then there's tons of tutorials out there to kind of guide you through these ones. So I would recommend picking one or both of these up and, and getting to know it as well. Um, just even at a basic level, do some basic, um, you know, 2D uh, changes of the assets in Unreal and, and work with importing them in and uh, back and forth. Um, Unreal has a wealth of free assets. That's one of the amazing things about Unreal Engine, and I'll, I'll get into that uh, with a little bit of the t last few tips I'm going to give you. Um, but every asset that you get is not going to be perfect the way that you want it, and ultimately at some point in time, eventually, the eventuality is you're going to want to change it or tweak it, whether that's just changing the color of an asset or you know changing just a little bit to tweak it to, to how you want um, it'd be really good to have a, a base of understanding um, in these tools. So they're free. I would get them. I would uh, try and understand them and learn a little bit more. Um, and I think it'll be helpful. Um, yeah. And then, you know, I've got some links here uh, just to show you. Uh, there's obviously the forums in the, the forums, the Unreal Engine, um, you know, actual official forums. Um, so you can go here and you can, you know, there's obviously a, a ton of activity here, hundreds of thousands of posts. So you can go through those and see what the community is doing. I don't find those quite as active as the Facebook groups. So I would encourage you as a beginner to check out some of the new Facebook groups. It gives you an idea of what some of the other projects people are working on, some of the questions people are asking. You'll get tidbits and little um, cool things if, if you're on there. And you can see um, I've got six groups that I've added to uh, my account, um, but there are way more than six. Um, so there's a wealth of knowledge there, community of people um, that you can interact with. If you're active on there, you'll probably see me on there and, and uh, happy to interact with you. Um, so I would encourage you to check those out. Yeah, I think, you know, I'll, I'll dive into, you know, I, I will say, you know, obviously I've got a channel and there's a few things there. My channel is really beginner related. Um, as I went through my first month, I just said, you know, if there's anything that I couldn't find an answer to or a, a clean answer to that I'd make sort of a tutorial, it's not, uh, it's definitely not, um, you know, uh, at the highest professional level or, or recommended from Unreal or anything like that. It's just my learnings and what I have. You know, I could have some stuff that's wrong in there, but um, if you want to use any of my videos as a resource too, I'm going to continue to document sort of my journey through Unreal. So, you know, feel free to watch some of my videos. If you've got feedback, if I've got things wrong, let me know if there's things that I need to fix up in my videos. That's my whole intent. Um, I go off of the principle of like just trying to help others, um, you know, avoid pitfalls that I ran into. And then secondly, you know, if you learn something, you learn something. But 
if you um, you know try to teach something, that's when you can really master something. So um, that's really the purpose of what I'm trying to do is give back, but then to solidify some of the things that I've learned by uh, going through them again and, and teaching them. When you go through them, you can kind of do it haphazardly. You can leave your mistakes behind. But when you're communicating that information to somebody else, you have to second guess yourself and you have to do a bit of a gut check through. Um, so if you keep that in mind, I, I hope you enjoy some of my videos and, um, you know, give me a like and subscribe. Um, uh, that would be cool. Okay. Um, so I'm going to show you the Epic games launcher. This is going to become really important. Um, most important, um, is you need to go to the marketplace once a month. Reason being is, um, Unreal has this free for a month thing. And they will put up five or six things for free every month. So this month, for example, you can get this entire project with all of these, look at like these really cool assets um, that I'm sure you can find a way to utilize in your projects all for free. Like that is insane. Um, and if you look at, uh, I don't know if I go back, if you look at the regular price tag, this is normally 83 bucks every month. And that's not one of those like scams, like, Oh, it's free now. So like, you know what I mean? Like it's actually next month, it'll be 83 bucks. Like, so I would recommend coming in once a month, um, and grabbing everything in here. Um, when you're grabbing stuff for free, you actually don't have to download it on your computer. So that may be a couple of gigs of, of content that you don't want to uh, download onto your computer. Um, but the way that you can do it is if you click on one of these, you click free, um, it'll add it to your cart, you'll pay for it, and then it sits in your um, Unreal library. So all of these assets um, down here are in my vault, and I have them forever. It's always free, and I'm free to use them commercially. So if I make a game, I can use any of these assets um, from the Unreal Marketplace. That's pretty sick. As long as I use them in Unreal, I can't go to like Unity or one of the competitors and use the assets. That's a no, 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 no. Um, but yeah, like that's insane value. And and you know, I started in November. I look back at the assets that were available in October and. August and September and blah, blah, blah. And I'm so sad that I missed out on some of those. So that's a uh, number one tip I can give you is come in here every month, um, get those assets for free, at least have them assigned to your library so that, you know, if you ever do want to download them, you can, uh, what else? I think we're getting close to wrapping up here. Oh, there was one other thing I wanted to show you. You're going to hear a lot, um, in development or filmmaking about trying to make things as real uh, as possible. Um, and you'll get a lot of advice about, you know, if I wanted to start my first game or if I wanted to start my first, um, you know, video sequence, like where do I go? How do I start that? Um, and you know, people point you to, you know, pen and paper, write everything down, get all your ideas on paper, get, um, you know, plan everything out so that when you approach your, your game for the first time, um, that, uh, you're not going to run into pitfalls of going pitfalls running too far along in your project and then realizing you made a, a grave mistake because you didn't plan everything out. And now you have to rewind and do all that again. I don't know that it's necessarily fully avoidable, especially as a beginner, but I do think it's good advice. And so um, I thought I'd just show quickly. There's another free tool. Gitmine.com has a, a free mind mapping tool. So a lot of the times when you're using a journal or a piece of paper or you're using um, OneNote or or you know a notepad, WordPad type of document to document all your details. The process is very linear. So you do it from top to bottom, and you put all these ideas, and then um, they're just there. But that's not really how most uh, creative brains or most brains are working. Is they're working in oh I think about this idea, and then what about that? And so how do you capture that in an organized fashion? And you know I find these mind mapping tools um, are really good for that. So you know if I had an idea of a school and I'm like oh I need to map the outside and then blueprint and you know outside I want you know I want some asphalt and I want to have a basketball court and so your mind goes that way and you can go there and then when you think about oh wait what about the classroom and I want the teacher and so um, you could sort of just organically map your thoughts in a tool like this. I really like this one because it allows you to include images. And, and when I first started off this conversation around this tool, I mentioned that when you're level building or, you know, you're, you're developing a game or, you know, you're going to make a, a movie uh, render in, in Unreal, you want to make that look and feel 
feel as realistic as possible. Even if you're dealing in, in um, you know, in a cartoon or a fake environment, you still want that to be based in some form of reality so it, it immerses you in that experience and it feels very real or there's an attachment to some reality um, to the end user, right? And they'll often, uh, people will often give you recommendations of going and getting real pictures of, of what you wanna do, right? So I had this um, you know little mini project that I'm playing with of building a school and I went and I gathered every picture and then I put it on my hard drive, but then you have to kind of go through and you have to click through them. And this is a way better way to sort of map out that experience. So, you know, when I was developing the hallway, um, I just got to refresh this. When I was developing the hallway in my project, you know, I just double click on that and I'd have this image up and I could sort of model my environment in some form of reality and have a really good reference to, uh, to reality. Um, and similarly, you know, if you're designing the outside of the school, like how cool is that, that you can um, just pop that up and a double click and then also have it all mapped out in this, this one big mind map. So anyways, I won't beat that to death. Uh, I think that's a really cool tool for planning and using that. I really encourage people to, to do that and, and veer away from, you know, WordPad and stuff like that. Um, this just, for me, just seems like a much better um, way to map out your, your thoughts and ideas. And, and you know, I, I'm representing pictures here, but, um, you know, this tool allows you to, you know, um, continue to add branches and, and different things of all your thoughts and carry on here and then create new ideas and, and away you go. So um, it's it's not just pictures, it's, it's just thoughts in general. So uh, if you're not familiar with my mapping tools, this is the one. It's free. It's cool. There's other ones out there. Maybe you find one that's better than, than this. Um, uh, let's just see. I want to make sure that I didn't miss any tips. Oh, yeah, here's a cool one. Um, if you're not uh, an avid YouTube user, as you go through these tutorials, I mean, you're not, you know, you're not going to love everybody. Um, you know, some people are going to resonate better that, with you than others. Some people are going to go too fast. Some people are going to go too slow. So what I think is really handy to know about, if you if you didn't already, is just on the little gear wheel here in settings. Whoops. In settings here, um, you can go back to playback speed, and if someone's going too fast, you can slow down on their speed um, to a speed that's better for you to follow along with. Alternatively, you know, like you've got a four-hour video like this one um, uh, by Unreal Sensei here, you can throw that at two times speed, and you can fly through that video um, in half the time. So I found that's a really big time saver is one, you know, sometimes you're starting a video and you're not like, is this actually what I want to learn? Do I, am I, is this the video that I want to watch that's right for me? So if you watch it at two times speed first and kind of get a sense, you can do that twice the time. Time is money. Um, so I think that's a fantastic tip. That'll save you a lot of time in your first month if you use that. Um, I already talked about, yeah, have a journal, use the mind map tool. Uh, oh, a really, really good tip is there's so much information out there. You're going to be getting a whole bunch of different assets. You're going to be um, creating folders and you're going to be working in different programs. Start off right. Organize your, your file folder structure. Organize your projects. Name everything. Be really, really anal with your naming conventions. Be really, really anal with how you store the files that you download. You're going to want this information fast and furious and you're going to be going all over the place and it can build into a spider web and a disaster really quickly. Take your time, be patient, be organized. Um, uh, that's not that's not necessarily my nature and how I work. So I I, I can't I can't uh, stress that enough. Um, really do that. Um, and then um, yeah, just expect expect to be patient. Don't expect that you're going to start this and then have a game built in a couple of weeks or in a few months or even in a year. Um, just make make goals every week and make the process iterative. You know, your goal could be, hey, I just I want to get through this four hour tutorial in two weeks. That's a great goal. Just think about how much you can learn by that and that should be your goal. If you put your goals too lofty, if you don't divide things into chunks, if you're not patient, um, you're gonna feel unsuccessful and, and this is gonna become, instead of it being a passion and enjoy enjoying the ride and having fun like it's supposed to be, um, you might put your, uh, you might be setting your expectations um, too high for yourself and you may be frustrated or, you know, feel defeated. So I would just, you know, make really small goals, set them for the week or set them, you know, for the day, try and achieve those goals and uh, be comfortable in that. Um, 
yeah, and, and, and I think just enjoy the ride there. Um, lastly, I'll just show you to, to follow up in, in terms of expectations. I'll show you what I've done in the first month. Not a whole lot. Um, you know, I, here's, here's sort of a level that I've built. Um, you know, you saw the classroom and, and school there. Um, you know, I've got some basic functionality working. Whoops, I'm just going to switch to my joystick so it operates a little better. Uh, you know, I, I, these are all assets that I've I have I haven't made most of these assets myself. I think one or two of them, but most of them are repurposed assets. You know, I've done some tweaking. I've got some basic functionality that's that's working in terms of opening doors and being able to do things in the level. Um, you can see, you know, from the images that I shared with you on my GitHub there, um, you can tell where my um, influences are coming from right out of those images. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, this is all this is all really a, what I've built in terms of my own sort of project um, in the first month. You can tell I'm still messing around with with some of the cool assets from Unreal that I think are amazing that they're giving them to us for free. Um, you know, built a, a washroom here. I can show you. I was talking about the per, the performance level of my uh, card. You can see here with some uh, reflection ca captures, it does start to slide and slow down performance and, and frame rate. If I spin really fast, you can see that it just, it, it, it shutters a little bit uh, and staggers. Same thing out here. I can, I can feel a little bit of an, uh, a frame rate uh, reduction when I, when I come into these areas. So I think there's an opportunity for, for me to it, it make some optimization improvements um, in my level. Um, but uh, that also could be, you know, partly attributed to uh, having a lower end, um, uh, graphics card and GPU that I, I talked about earlier. Um, the GPU itself is six gigs, but the the card itself is the 1660 Ti, which you know if you go back to that chart, it's on the lower end. Um, so that that kind of gives you a, a, a bit of a benchmark with what I'm running with when I show you the machine. This is the better machine. Keep that in mind. So the other one will perform probably you know a quarter um, or less a, as good as this one. Uh, yeah, so that's that's what I've covered. I also, you know, I, I mentioned going through that uh, tutorial with Ponty Pants. Um, we created this Flappy Bird ah! game by following along with him. Uh, I made mine with Homer. I don't know if the sounds are coming through. I should probably turn the sounds up on my machine so you can hear them. Uh, I'm just going to drop in my earbud here. Yeah, there you go. That should be coming through for you guys. I hope it is. Um, anyways, we'll go with that, and maybe you can hear the homework sounds that I added. But yeah, we've got basically a, a Flappy Bird Put knockoff. Down, you, ah! you notice the um, the donuts Put in there. Down, That's lousy. the 3D donut that I built in ah! Blender with the tutorial that I recommended to you. But you see, you got a bit of a functioning game. Um, so that's the other thing that we've done in a month. Um, what else do we got? I think I think that's pretty much it. You know, I, I, I did put a few tutorials together around getting assets to sit and stand in a level. Um, so you can check out some of my other videos to see some of that. But that's that's really all I've done in a month. So I think and, and you know, you know, my personal I, I don't know if I gave you my background. My background is in project management. I do have like my, when I what I took in school was computer science. Um, so I do have a little bit of a programming background. I would still say that, you know, I'm 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 a beginner to intermediate programmer. I haven't used a ton of it in, in my career path. And so we're talking about 20 year old knowledge. So 20 years ago, I learned C++. Um, it, it, I did use it, you know, moderately in, in, in my career. When I uh, took over um, the support of a call center, I used the programming to program their IBR and, and reverse engineer a lot of stuff. So you'll see my strategy to a lot of um, the Unreal stuff is taking other people's code and then reverse engineering and trying to learn that way. Um, but I don't have an extensive background, so if this is if this gives you sort of a benchmark for yourself, this is as far as I got with 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 that knowledge. I don't have any 3D modeling or anything like that uh, as a background. Um, I did have you know about a year or two as a hobbyist some experience with Photoshop and. Um, uh, After Effects, Adobe After Effects. So there is some relating there in, in terms of you know key frame, framing and stuff like that when it comes to sequencing and stuff like that. That an animation um, that came a little bit more intuitively. But um, yeah, this might give you a good benchmark of you know where to set your expectations. 
Um, I really focused the first month on, on learning. Uh, there's so much to learn there. You know, other people may have focused it more on development and got a bit further, but I hope that gives you um, a rough idea of where where you should land in, in about a month. So still a lot to learn, still really, really excited, still really being patient. And uh, I hope this video has helped uh, somebody else, um, you know, get there a little bit faster than I did in my first month and, um, you know, have a good path to success. So see you around and appreciate you sticking through this video.